How's it going guys? For anyone who's been following the channel, you're probably well aware that I've made a lot of leak code videos. So today, after a request from one of my patrons, I think it's probably a good idea to make a video about how to use leak code effectively. Okay guys, so today for our video of how to use leak code effectively, I have three tips for you. My first tip is to have a study schedule leading up to your interview. So chances are when you get an interview, right, you're gonna schedule it so you know if, I, if you have a week, if you have a month, if you have three months to prepare. And so between now and the time that you have your interview, you can actually just kind of sketch out and draw out how you're gonna properly prepare for that interview. And so what I typically recommend is making your study schedule goal and time oriented. So I don't think it's just enough to say, okay, I have an interview next week. I'm going to, you know, spend this weekend studying for it. I think what you should really try and do is systematically break down, okay, I have five days till my interview. These are five really important topics I need to know. And to understand these five different topics, I'm going to spend, say, two hours a day studying with the goal of solving five questions. So you need to be systematic about how you study. You need to be organized in order to make sure that you're using your time most effectively and you're getting the most done each day. Also by laying out your schedule and ensuring that you cover all these different topics that you might see on your interview, you're gonna help ensure that you don't have any gaps in your knowledge, which will really make sure that you give yourself the best chance of succeeding during your interview. My second tip is pretty simple, but it's really to just simulate a real interview every single time that you study. So again, if you are solving a question from Lee Code, my recommendation is to set a timer for 25, 30 minutes and honestly attempt that problem for an entire 25 to 30 minutes. So the reason for this is because no matter what happens during a real interview, chances are you're gonna be solving the question for probably 45 minutes. And so what I like to try and do is I try and simulate the interview but under a little bit more pressure, right? So if you can solve the question in 30 minutes, you're gonna have no problem solving a real interview question in 45. Furthermore, by actually sitting there and attempting the problem for about 30 minutes, you're going to force yourself to, no matter what happens, do your best to actually solve that problem. So a lot of people, I think, have the tendency to look at a problem, think about it for five to 10 minutes, then say, okay, I don't know how to do this, I'm gonna look at the answer. And I think that's a really big problem because during a real interview, you're not gonna be able to do that. Right? You're not going to be able to just magically pull up the answer. And so I think by actually practicing this and struggling with these questions, it's going to make sure that you're flexing that muscle to practice for if that does unfortunately happen during the real interview. You're not going to go into panic mode. You're going to have, hopefully have some sort of plan, some sort of way to approach the problem that will help you get unstuck. Um, and ultimately, you know, hopefully you'll be able to actually solve that question because you practiced for this exact scenario. I think it's also important to mention that by not looking at the solution, this is really where you learn. I think a lot of times the way that I actually understood how to solve a problem or how to correctly apply a certain algorithm or technique to a problem was when I didn't know how to do the problem, but eventually I spent enough time on it to be able to come up with an answer. And I think that by prematurely looking at the solution, you're really kind of robbing yourself of that experience and that depth of understanding. So. What I kind of like to think is that by looking at a solution, you're really going to go towards memorizing the code. And so memorizing the code is going to help you solve one question and one question only that specific question. But by sitting there and really chewing on the problem, really trying to digest it and understand what's happening, struggling and hopefully ultimately understanding how to solve the problem, you're actually going to be able to apply that knowledge to a handful or a multitude of other problems. So by sitting there and taking the extra 30 minutes to understand and really struggle with that question, if you can come up with a solution, I think you're going to be able to apply that process and that understanding and hopefully that algorithm to a handful of other questions, which is way more beneficial than just memorizing one single solution. My final tip today, guys, and probably the most important one is to just be honest with yourself and know what you don't know. It's 100% fine not to understand a topic or a problem, but the real bad thing about that is if you act like you do understand that problem or those topics, because you're not doing yourself any favors. If I don't actually understand DFS, but I'm telling myself I do, I'm not gonna study it as much as I should, or I'm not gonna spend the time to understand it. And then if I get that during my interview, I'm only hurting myself. 
So be honest with yourself, prepare properly. If you don't understand a question, that's okay. Go over it, ask for help, watch videos on YouTube, my channel. Do whatever you have to do to understand that question or that topic. But what I don't recommend is acting like you understand that topic, lying to yourself, and then building off that faulty foundation. So for example, if you don't understand how to do string problems, I imagine that you're gonna have problems doing a harder topic like graph problems. So what I would recommend is build a solid foundation, right? Everything is gonna build on top of each other. So if you don't understand recursion, you're probably gonna have trouble with dynamic programming or graph problems, things of that nature. So what you should really do is understand where you lie, right? Take an honest assessment when you start your studying. Say, these are the things I know or I feel more comfortable about. These are the things I feel terrible about or I don't know or I have no experience with. Wherever you start, that's fine. But just make sure that you're not missing any step in the process, right? Start with strings, then move to hash maps. You know, study linked lists, like whatever order you want to do it in. I'm happy to help you make a plan. I do that with a lot of my patrons. But don't skip steps in your preparation. And so what I don't want you guys to do is have a faulty foundation in one topic and then try and apply it to other topics. So again, it doesn't matter what you know, what you don't know. It doesn't matter how much you know versus how much you don't know. Don't take that faulty step or don't lean on that faulty skill. Further develop it and make sure that you have that foundation to apply to harder topics. So if that means starting with the easiest question or the easiest topic, that's totally fine but build that foundation in that topic so that you can use it and apply it to other problems. And this kind of goes hand in hand with memorizing solutions. I think a lot of times people tend to memorize solutions, and this is what I used to do when I first started studying for interviews, which I don't recommend. I feel like a lot of people have a tendency to memorize a solution when they don't actually understand what's happening or why this solution works. And again, like I said in my previous tip, I think that's really dangerous. I think that by memorizing a solution, you're just memorizing the code, you don't really understand how it works. And by memorizing, you're only gonna be able to solve that one question in that one specific instance. You're robbing yourself of the opportunity of understanding that problem, gaining that knowledge, and then being able to apply that knowledge effectively to a handful of other questions. So don't do that, don't memorize solutions. A lot of times it doesn't work out anyways because an interviewer can just throw on another variation of the problem and your code all of a sudden won't work for that specific case. So be honest, know what you don't know, and prepare accordingly. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Those are my three tips for you for how to use LeetCode effectively. My first tip was to use a study schedule when you're preparing for your interviews, when you study, simulate a real environment, and three, know what you don't know and be honest about your own abilities. So I kind of tell people this a lot, but I really think that interview preparation is really kind of like a recipe. If you follow the instructions and you know how to invert a binary tree, you're gonna get a cake. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys next time.